Let's look at a few pipe flow problems here. In this example, there are two reservoirs which is connected by two pipes, pipe 1 and pipe 2. We want to cal calculate the velocities of the flow in these two different pipes, what is velocity 1 and what is velocity 2. Few dimensions are given. Diameter of pipe 1 is 0 0.3, diameter of pipe 2 is 0 0.6 meter. The length of the pipes are 1 kilometer. I guess both pipes are 1 kilometer long. The friction factor, in some cases written as F, is also given, which is 0 0.04. Okay. Now, instead of giving the Ks or the roughness coefficient, the friction factor is directly given here. So, if roughness coefficient was given, then first you need to calculate the friction factor to calculate head loss. Now, in these two reservoirs, we need to calculate the velocities. Um, sorry, in these two pipes, we need to calculate velocities and we apply the continuity equation, the concept of continuity equation first, okay, so that we can establish a relationship between the velocity of 1 and velocity of 2. So the continuity equation states the amount of mass entering the system and that exiting from the system equals to 0. And we are dealing steady state flow condition, which means that the discharge in pipe 1 at any point and discharge at pipe 2 at any other point should be the same. So and the flow at this section okay, and flow at this section should be the same. So applying that concept, we equate Q1 equals to Q2, which is Q equals to area times velocity 1, area 1 times velocity 1 equals to area 2 times velocity 2 and area equals to pi d squared by 4 right so the area of the pipe is pi d squared over 4 so if you substitute this value these values we get v1 equals to a2 a1 v2 so if you from this v1 equals a2 v2 divided by a1 and you can write in terms of d1 and d2 because we know the values of d1 and d2. So this gives us v1 equals to 4v2. That means velocity at 1 is 4 times that of velocity at pipe 2. Now we use energy equation. Okay, Energy equation at any two section can be applied, but because we know the point A is the water level at reservoir and point B is also water level at reservoir and when the water flows there is a loss of head of 53 meter. The difference in water level between the two reservoirs is actually the loss of head. right? So that loss of head should be due to the frictional loss and other minor losses. If there were no losses, then water level at reservoir A and reservoir would have been the same. But that is not the case. That there is a difference of water level of 53 meter. That means the loss of head is 53 meter. Now, first, uh, there are minor and major head losses. So we need to calculate both minor and major head losses. So what are the losses? At this point, the water is entering the pipe, so there is an entrance loss. And through the pipe 1, there will be friction loss. There is a certain expansion of the pipe here, so certain expansion, expansion loss. Then frictional loss in pipe 2, and finally the 
exit exit loss or um, exit loss at certain expansion you can see all these are in terms of the velocity head so this is like k v square over 2z okay so in trans loss coefficient is 0 0.5 times v1 square by 2z so velocity at this point is v1 similarly friction loss is fl v square over 2zd right so fl v square over 2zd is the frictional head loss and here it is written lambda instead of f similarly certain expansion loss is slightly different v1 minus v2 square divided by 2g but other losses other minor losses are in terms of velocity head only one velocity head and this way we calculate everything in terms of v1 and v2 and because we know v1 equals to 4v2 we can substitute all the v1s in in like 4v2 and we get all these minor losses in terms of v2 only so the total loss including the friction loss the both the combination of minor and frictional losses is 117.39 okay, so if you add them up this becomes 117.39 v2 square and that has to be the actual head loss which is this 53 meter that's the difference in elevation between these two points so here actually we are applying the energy equation p1 over gamma plus v1 square over 2z plus z1 minus head loss equals to p2 over gamma plus v2 square over 2z plus z2 right so a pressure at both sections are zero because both are exposed to atmosphere the difference between um, sorry velocity at section one and section two not the pipe sections but point a and point b that's what we are considering okay so this p1 and b1 and z1 are not the pipe but uh, the section so i should have written a p a v a and z a and p b v v and z b okay so velocity at a and velocity at b they are also zero because at the water level the velocity are zero that means head loss equals to z a minus z b okay and that's what we got so this is the head loss which equals to z a minus z b that is the elevation difference which is 53 now we can solve this equation to get the value of v2 which is 0.672 once we know v2 we can calculate v1 which is 2.69 now finally what is the discharge flowing through this pipe we can calculate q equals to a times v from any of these equations both should give us the same value we select the pipe one or we select the pipe two both of should provide us the same discharge which is 0.19 meter cube per second let's look at this example here where the pipelines are in parallel in the previous example the pipelines are in series here the pipelines are parallel to each other okay so they are the one pipe doesn't influence another pipe here also the information of the pipes in terms of diameter is given d1 is 1.2 meter and d2 is 0.9 meter length of both pipes is 43 kilometer and friction factor is 0.04 for both now we want to calculate what are the discharges through different these two pipes in the remember in the previous example because the pipes are in series the discharge has to be same because from one pipe it goes to the another pipe so using the conservation of mass the discharges in both pipes 
they were the same whereas here the discharges are different so what we do we apply this uh, energy equation between point a and point b so p a by gamma plus v a square by 2g plus z a minus head loss equals to p b by gamma plus v b square by 2g plus z b so, or head loss you can write on the right hand side and you add the head loss okay now the reservoir this level b is the datum that's what we assume that means uh, we can calculate the elevation at two different points and because these are the uh, reservoir levels the pressure is zero so here atmospheric pressure p a by gamma atmospheric which is zero velocity is zero at the reservoir level no flow z a we don't know uh, p b is zero velocity is zero z is the datum that's why zero and the head loss right and if you add them up head loss equals to z1 so actually the head loss in pipe one is um, this difference which is uh, 150 minus zero and from there we calculate what is the head loss actually it is flv square over 2gd so in this example it didn't mention about the minor losses and also because the pipe is very long 43 kilometer if we even if we include the velocity uh, sorry minor loss of entry and exit the difference will not be that big okay so that has been ignored so flv square over 2gd or lambda l is lv square over 2gd we substitute the values all the values are known so head loss is 150 lambda value is known velocity is what we want to find out and diameter is known and from this we get velocity equals 1.44 meter per second and discharge is 1.621 so discharge equals to area times velocity and we get the discharge same with the pipe number two uh, we use the energy equation between these two points and here also head loss has to be the same because the difference in water level whichever path the water particle takes the head loss is the same so that's why uh, head loss is the same the other parameters of the pipe is different so they are different values lambda 2 is same length is still the same velocity that we want to find out but diameter is different right so in this example uh, sorry for this pipe 2 diameter is 0 0.9 and that's why we get the velocity is 1.24 so for the first pipe the velocity is 1.44 because first pipe is bigger and that's why it has uh, the velocity of 1.44 and the second pipe is smaller it has the velocity of 1.24 okay and the discharge is 0 0.789 meter cube per second so the most the point to here to remember if the pipes are parallel the head loss is the same for both pipes but the discharges may be different now let's look at the third example here the pump in system below has an efficiency of 75 percent so this pump has an efficiency of 75 percent the atmospheric pressure is 101 kilopascal and the vapor pressure is 2.3 kilopascal okay and it asks to assume kinematic viscosity is 0 0.96 and neglect the minor losses and we want to calculate the velocity through the main pipe and of the jet so what is the velocity here and what is the velocity at the jet calculate the friction factor calculate the pump power and what is the greatest distance from the reservoir that pump can be located to avoid cavitation okay so that, that's the uh, fourth question so when the cavitation occurs cavitation will occur when the pressure at pump inlet drops to vapor pressure so we need to check uh, what is the pressure if the pressure is 
2.3 kilopascal which is the vapor pressure then cavitation will occur so let's write what are the values available pump efficiency atmospheric pressure vapor pressure kinematic viscosity pressure at 0 0.2 is 700 kilopascal pipe diameters d2 and d3 equals to 5 and uh, 2.5 right so pipe diameters are uh, known now we assume the pipe level is the datum level okay so we assume this center line of the pipe is datum and from there uh, these are the different points so one before the pump is 0.4 and this point where we know the pressure is 2 and at the exit at the end of this nozzle is 0.3 so we just label different points and find out what are the elevation and pressure head z1 is 20 so this is 20 meter above the center line of the pipe z2 z3 and z4 they are at the same elevation so 0 and p1 and p3 are zero at pressure because both of these points these points are exposed to atmosphere so they are uh, zero pressures now we apply the continuity equation uh, to establish the relationship between the flow through the nozzle and flow inside the main pipe because q2 equals to q3 so discharge at 2 equals to q3 and obviously at 4 also the same but we just equate 2 and 3 and establish that relationship which is v3 equals to 4 times v2 okay uh, q equals to av and from that you calculate v3 equals to 4 v2 okay so uh, q2 equals to q3 and uh, you apply as in the previous example q equals to av and then area equals to pi d square by 4 and that pi and 4 parameters will cancel out and the remaining will be like this v3 over v2 equals to d2 over d3 whole square and then if you uh, rearrange you get v3 equals to 4 times v2 because we know the diameter 2 and diameter 3 values now we apply the energy equation between these two points, 0 0.2 and 0 0.3. So P2 by gamma plus V2 square by 2G, Z is 0, and P3 by gamma plus V3 square by 2G. And the distance between these two points are, is very small, so the head loss is neglected. So we substitute the values, pressure 700 kilopascal, so you convert in pascal, divided by rho z velocity we don't know 2 times 9.81 and pressure at 3 is 0 because it is exposed to atmosphere that means v3 over 2z is this much right and but we also know v3 equals to 4 times v2 and we substitute v3 v3 equals to 4 times v2 and in this equation we have only unknown that is v2 so we calculate the value for v2 and we get v2 equals to 9.66 meter per second and once we know v2 we can also calculate v3 which is four times of that velocity now we have this velocity at 2 and velocity at 3 right and the velocity at 4 will also be same as v2 because there is no change in the pipe cross section between 4 and 2 so that the velocity at 4 should also be the same as velocity at 2 now we want to calculate the head loss right to calculate head loss we need the Reynolds number which is rho vd over mu so vd sorry vd over nu and velocity times uh, diameter divided by nu so these values are known 4.93 for wrought iron k equals to 0 0.046 so this is 
um, a typical value so you can get it, this value from the manufacturer or the textbook or the standard so for wrought iron what is the k value for pvc pipe what is the raw value and um, k value and so on from there you calculate k by d ratio and uh, you get this 9.2 times 10 to the power minus 5 and you get the lambda or friction factor f as 0 0.10199 so this is you the value you get from the moody's diagram but you can calculate this from swami jain equation you can cal calculate from colebrook white equation as well now once you know the lambda then you can calculate the friction head flv square over 2zd um, lambda times l times sorry divided by d divide uh, times v square divided by 2z and you get the head loss of 757.5 meters so this is significant uh, loss of the head now how we calculate this k by d ratio okay uh, sorry the friction factor so k by d ratio is 0.0092 so you see where uh, in y-axis on this left side of this Moody's diagram you read this value and we also read the Reynolds number which is 4.93 times 10 to the power 5 so this is 10 to the power 5 this is 10 to the power 6 so we want to find out which is 4.93 and this is the value right so we have these two values and from this one uh, from the k by d value you don't draw the straight line but try to draw a curve parallel to the other two curves on your side okay so a parallel to this curve here and the uh, this curve here you draw a line parallel and like this so where this Reynolds number crosses that curve from there you draw a straight line and read the friction factor here so if it is somewhere here then you will be reading that one if, for example if the Reynolds number is somewhere here then you would be reading the friction factor here right so this way we get the um, value of lam uh, lambda or friction factor from Moody's diagram now finally we can calculate this head required by the pump and again for that we apply the energy equation between two points and uh, I have chosen between uh, point 1 and 2 right so because between point and 1 and 2 because uh, many information about point 1 and point 2 are known so z1 is 20 z3 is what we need is 0 and p1 and p3 both are 0 that's the reason I have selected 1 and 3 v4 and v2 are also known um, but what we need here is uh, the velocity at 3 because that's the point we want so z1 plus p1 by rho z plus v1 square by 2z plus head added by pump minus head loss or you can write head loss in other side add equals to elevation head plus pressure head plus velocity head at section 3 so we know this z1 is 20 p1 is 0 velocity head is 0 so plus has p equals to this is the datum so 0 pressure is 0 because exposed to atmosphere v3 square by 2z v3 square by 2z plus the head loss that we have already calculated and from that we see this is for 800 and 21.4 so uh, we can see um, that there is a significant friction because of the very high velocity very significant loss of head and the pump needs to overcome that that head loss and that's why even to pump only uh, 20 meter because we need a massive velocity which 
causes like um, the head loss of 757 meter we need the pump with a very high head okay and once we know uh, this one you know, we can also calculate the discharge area times velocity which is 0.019 meter cube per second now finally pump head required is uh, rho g q has divided by the efficiency okay that's the uh, energy required by the pump that is rho z discharge times head divided by the efficiency so um, if you want to calculate in terms kilowatt so, so this is thousand times nine nine point eight one so nine nine point eight one so this is just a convenient way to calculate directly in terms of kilowatt otherwise you will get in terms of a watt so you can obviously write a row equals a thousand times 9.81 okay and then you divide later to convert watts to kilowatt and then this is times head divided by efficiency and then you get the capacity of pump is 204 kilowatt now let's look at the last part which is to find out the distance of the pump from the reservoir to avoid cavitation cavitation occurs when the pressure reaches below the atmospheric pressure which is uh, 2.5 kilopascal as given to us right so actual atmospheric pressure is 101 kilopascal but because the increase in velocity the pressure uh, reduced and that can go up to this point if it is below that cavitation will occur so we don't I want that to happen okay so this is the limit so what is the head loss between that entry of the pipe to the pump location that is FLV square over 2 ZD right so that's uh, the equation we have and if we substitute the value of the F or lambda uh, length we don't know but uh, we know the velocity we know the uh, pipe diameter and also 2g so head loss equals to 1.81 times l now we apply the energy equation between 1 and 0.4 to find out what is the pressure so energy equation z1 plus v1 by rho g plus v1 square by 2g equals to z4 plus p4 plus v4 square by 2g plus head loss so because we select uh, we have selected the point which is just before the pump that's why we don't need to add the energy added by the pump but even though we don't need to add the energy by the pump we know the velocity in this pipe entire section will be the same which is 9.66 meter per second so when we have the datum at the pipe level so z1 minus z4 we move z to here on the side is 20 minus 0 because z4 is 0 P1 minus P4 by rho G, 101 minus 2.5 divided by rho G. And this V1 square by 2G minus V4 square by 2G at section 1, velocity 0, and at 2 to 9.66. And that should be equal to the head loss, which is 1.81 L. And if you um, solve this you get 25.3 equals to 1.81 l that means l should be 14 meter so this distance has to be uh, 14 meter